Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, out on another walk. And this time I'm in West Sussex. I've uh, got long furlong over there. I'm carrying on with my walks along the, or near to, the Monarch's Way. Uh, I'm walking slightly backwards this way because the sun is pointing in my face. And if I turn the camera around, unfortunately you'll, uh, you'll get dazzled. <laughs> I don't mind being dazzled myself. So I'm above Patching, which is just to the south of me. There's a beautiful church. There's a lovely tiny little village. And then there's this hill going north, which is Patching Hill. I'm on the South Downs again. And this time I'm in search of Mickle Grove House. Now, I don't know if it's called Mickle Grove or Michael Grove or even Mitchell Grove. There's um, various different pronunciations. I'm going to call it Mickle Grove. So there we go. My first bode of contention is to pass these cows. I'm not a great lover of uh, the bovine animal. And so I'm <laughs> hoping that they will just stay sedately looking at me and not come charging at me. For on my right hand side, is a, a little bit of a ridge and I don't want them to push me off. Now, they seem quite content. There have been deaths from uh, walkers and cows but it's very very rare. Um, I just want to have a look down here and just show you this, uh, I don't know if you can see, it just drops away down there and on my left you get this great view. This is um, Patching Hill. You get this great view across, again in the distance, <laughs> the landmark of Chantonbury Ring. And uh, I don't think you can see it now, but Sisbury Ring is beyond um, the long furlong, which is in the distance. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to explore Mickle Grove House. In my previous walk, when I went up Black Patch Hill, I indicated Mickle Grove Wood, uh, quite a, a large wooded area, which is part now of the Arundel, of the um, Angmering Estate. My plan is to try and look down and see if I can see the remains of Mickle Grove House. There is really nothing there. There's a bit of a tower and I think a wall and that's it. I can't actually go down there because it's on private land but it's sort of round that corner. I don't think I'm going to be able to get to it um, or even see it because of the wood. So that's okay. Um, I knew there was nothing to see really and I couldn't get to it. So um, I'm gonna try and plow through the wood. Again, this is uh, getting down to, I'm not quite on it yet, the Monarch's Way, which is the route that Charles II um, took when he was escaping uh, England to get over to France beautiful beautiful views from up here however it's Mickle Grove House that I I want to tell you a bit about its potted history for in this area it was a significant manor and even was home to the very famous Shelley family of which the poet um, Percy Shelley was one of the descendants now I do have an ordnance survey with me but I just got to go through this squishy mud and try and find the route. I was accused the other day of waffling on too much, which I shall try not to. Right, I'm, I'm beginning to enter the, the wooded area. There's a difference between a forest and a wood and woodland and ancient woodland. So I won't go into any of that now. But uh, this really was a coppiced wood and that meant that the wood um, coppicing was a way of sustaining uh, wood. You would cut it down quite low and then shoots would grow up and that way trees can actually keep growing for well for centuries and centuries. They, they effectively never die. This wood was also, this Mickle Grove wood, was also a deer park and it, I think it was probably a deer park in two uh, eras, once in the Tudor period and another in the 
um, a sort of revival for deer parks in the uh, Georgian period. Coming up to another gate here, look at the size of some of these trees though, look at the girth of this great beast, absolutely amazing. I think it's uh, an elm, judging by the leaves. Right, it says here we're coming into the uh, Angmering Estate and I've actually, I'm just going to cross over this way because of the mud and try and get to the, try and get to the gate, although it may be easier to clamber over here. Another whopping, whopping great tree that somebody very kindly has made a crossing point for me. So we'll go this way. It does say keep to the paths all the time, which is, is what I'm going to do. I believe it's still a coppiced wood um, because uh, I think further round you see big piles of logs so they're still growing the timber which is great to see. So Mickle Grove House, now we're not going to see it as I say, they're the only remnants really that I possibly could see and it's very unlikely I'm going to find it, is the remains of a clock tower which actually was demolished around 1950 I think and by the 70s completely had gone. But Mickle Grove House as mentioned earlier, there was a house on the site from about 1279. And, and when we got into the Tudor period, it was owned by the Shelley family. Now the Shelley family, very important family. Um, they, it's gonna come through here cause it's so muddy. The Shelley family, a very important family, obviously extremely wealthy and uh, were courtiers to the king. In fact, in the Tudor period, Sir William Shelley, uh, it's believed, hosted um, or entertained Henry VIII down here at Micklegrove House. They probably even went hunting the fallow deer. There were 650 fallow deer here at one time. The estate appears to have had a curious history. At some point early in the 16th century, the Crown seems to have confiscated the house, then leased it back to the family and after a payment of £11,000, it was restored to the Shelleys. £11,000 does seem a little steep. Another bridle path here and now we're back on the Monarch's Way. Here we go, that way. Sir William rebuilt the property. The building was quadrangular with an open courtyard and polygonal towers at outer angles, all made of brick. In 1885 it was said to contain 50 rooms, however they were scantly furnished and in poor neglect. The Shelleys probably didn't reside here much and by 1592 the building was in great decay and was in urgent need of repair. In 1800 the house was sold. The Tudor house, its grandeur, was all sold to a chap from Liverpool, a Richard Walker. And he, and then later probably his son, made massive changes to the, to the Tudor house. The interior quadrangle the courtyard was roofed and raised up, became a hall and had um, towers either side. The uh, frontage was given a, a Doric arch very much of the time and the whole building was encased in cream coloured bricks. Now, there's, there's a history of um, brickyards around here, the clay clearly is perfect for bricks and so it would have oh <laughs> there we go that's uh, either uh, part not partridge grouse or um the other one wild birds that they are shooting birds that they shoot it is very muddy i have to say and my feet are just disappearing into great puddles of water and slurried mud so brickyards all over the place which would have given rise to the 
amount of brickwork that was used here. But Richard Walker didn't have the property for very long, for after a year he died. His son inherited, but his son was underage for a few years, so he didn't really do anything. But when he came of age, it seems that he probably spent more money on tarting up the place. He put two single-storey wings each side of the place. There were race horses. That I think that's when the second deer park was introduced, all in the um, 19th, beginning of the 19th century. Very stylish, very lavish, probably great parties thrown here. Um, however, the money was quickly spent and I believe in 1827 it was he either was bankrupt or was desperately in need of money, but the house was sold off to the Duke of Norfolk. The 12th Duke, Bernard Edward Howard, had Arundel Castle as his country estate a few miles west. To much consternation, the Duke pulled down the great house at Mickle Grove and had many of the trees cleared. The reason, rumour has it, he didn't want the house to compete with the magnificence of Arundel. Here, just down here, the stump of an old tree, and there's, a, there's more of them ranging here. I said this wood was coppiced, and so it was, but these, these trees, these big straight, these are, um, these are planted for timber because of the the, the straightness. I think these are planted and not coppiced. There's no coppicing stool. Now, I'm I'm only just beginning to learn about um, wood woodcraft and uh, that sort of thing, and, and particularly how it used to be done in the medieval period. I want to do some programs about that. But from what I have read, you see, you can see. here these um these stumps they're cut and there's no shoots so it looks like the trees are lopped off and they die with uh, nothing coming up from them which is a bit of a shame and they're clearly if you had the time and the skill to count the rings you'd see how old they were but i'm reckoning these are the trees from about 1800 or so 1827 when Richard Watt Walker took over and not from an earlier period and now they're being managed by the Ang Angring estate. Well this track goes on towards Amberley and then I guess towards Arundel. Um, I'm not going to be able to get that far in today's video so Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed a little bit of the potted history of Mickle Grove and Mickle Grove Wood. And I'll see you again on another walk. Until then, thanks for watching. Bye bye.